Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. All right, perfect. <laughs> I can definitely hear you. Okay, I was I was afraid it wouldn't be working. Sorry, can you say that again? I'm just saying it seemed like it wasn't going to be working, so I'm glad that your mic is working now. Yeah, uh, I'm just using my phone now. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with my computer. Okay, yeah, it sounds it sounds pretty all right, so I think we'll be fine using this. Yeah, that's cool. Um, did you get the slippy file I sent, by the way? Yeah, I did. Okay, could you do a quick intro for chat? There's people who probably didn't see the first lesson and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, so uh, my tag is Cell. Uh, I'm a SoCal Falco player. Uh, I've been playing for a few years. And yeah, that's about it. There you go, guys. He's a Falco. I've been playing for a few years. <laughs> All right, let's get this going. Yeah, do you have any thoughts on the video I'm gonna watch, or like, what is your pers what is like the perspective you want me to take on it? Um, yeah. So I guess like and you can see the screen share, right? Content. Hello. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Cool. Okay, what were you gonna say? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say in context of, like, uh, what our last lesson was about, um, mm -hmm. uh, you, I think last time you, you basically, like, the key takeaways were you said that uh, I should focus on being more proactive versus Fox, and um, I should improve my execution on my punishes. Yeah, I think uh, we talked about, like, moving out of hits instantly, right? Yeah, like just cleaning up my movement during my punish and not so much even worrying about actually getting the next hit. Just positioning myself in the spot that I need to be to get the hit is the more important part for now. Right, yeah, I remember going over that. Uh, and and then I think the other big thing that you mentioned was like how I dealt with platforms. Uh, like I wasn't, uh, a lot of times like I didn't back out of the range that Fox could hit me from uh with a fall through down air from top platform, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were saying that like my goal should be usually to just be out of the threat range and then try to land a laser on him as he's landing. Mm -hmm. And uh, also like on stages like Yoshi's where like the top platform covers a much bigger part of the stage. Um, I should be more down to use the platforms myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so let's check this out. Let's see what you do. Drop laser, laser approach. Oh, that's pretty good opening. And oh, you start a combo already. Okay, slightly miss it. Um, this is something that I've had a lot of issues with as Falco lately. Is that like this up tilt, where basically it like creates sort of like a fifty-fifty, where like if you get this up tilt. You don't actually know for sure whether you'll get, like, a punish because he could, you know, DI in a weird way to, like, be ambiguous with the platform. Or he could DI kind of out here and tech here and then it's kind of like an awkward situation for you to get to after the up tilt. And it's sort of like this, this up tilt feels like it would be a good idea because... You know, he's, you know he's coming down right here, but because you don't know his fast fall timing, it's pretty risky. And so, like, you can very easily get caught out of it like this, and it's sort of like you're taking, like, a really big risk without... Like, there's there's no reason to reduce your entire neutral game down to a 50-50, where either you get a punish, probably, or he gets a punish. And so it's like, you can... Like, you don't want to just reduce the game down into that, because you're sitting in center, like, the, you don't have, like, a disadvantage here at all, but then you're creating a situation where you have a 50-50, so, like... I think it'd probably be better to, like, shield, shine out of shield this, or jump into it and shine, as compared to up tilting. Like, if you're if you're reading that he's for sure going to drill onto you. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, for what it's worth, I 
think there might be some timing of up tilt that can cover both fastball and no fastball from drill, but I think he might still be able to drift around that up tilt anyway. Yeah, what Cody kept doing to me, I, I agree with that. What Cody kept doing is, come on, come on, Slippy. Okay, yeah, what Cody kept doing to me right here is he would do this jump, and then I would get ready to up tilt, and then he would like drift past me and then drift back. And I just, I kept getting hit by it. Like, I, I don't think it can cover it. Like, I'm, the thing is, is this up tilt, the thing, like, I don't think it's necessarily all that bad, but I think that, like, basically, you're allowing him to go from a situation where you were in a good position to 50 50 and kind of, or like, not even 50 50 and like, basically, you're putting yourself in a high risk spot. It's like high risk, high reward when you don't necessarily need to be doing that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I'm just going to kind of go over a few specifics, and then I'll look for generalities out of it. Okay, wait, how'd you get in the corner here? Because you have the advantage. Okay, yeah. You end up like there. That was another up tilt in kind of the same situation. Yeah, you really want to be careful about situations like this where right here you're doing really well because you have center and he's right here. Like this seems like a really perfect situation for you. But then through absolutely him doing nothing except for sitting here, so he shields this, by doing this and then not drifting to center here, you give up center and now you're cornered. And he didn't actually need to even do anything to corner you. So you ended up in like a bad situation here just because without him actually doing anything, basically by your own choice, you ended up cornered with him like here. And this is like not a situation that's like favorable for you. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. I think I do do that a lot, actually, as in general, where I like unintentionally position myself in ways that get me cornered. Mm -hmm. I... It's really easy to do as like accidentally as Falco. Okay, you're in the corner. I like that full hop out. Okay, so now, okay, you're here. Okay, none of that was was bad. Okay, you get out of the corner. Okay, you're now you're in center. Okay, that was fine. Ooh, I like that pressure. Okay. Yeah, that was solid. Wait, how did he get how did he get past you? Okay, he got a roll. Okay, that's fine. That's Hmm. Yeah, I think I think this is okay. I think you basically just got stuck in the corner like you could have shielded that too. So it wasn't even it was more of like a direct mistake rather than like a Okay, yeah, here's actually something really big that I already noticed is that you don't you don't dash dance after lasers. And so, basically, by not dash dancing out of lasers, it's like, yes, you could dash, a, like, you could do, like, a dash aerial out of a laser. And so, like, yeah, he can't, like, predict it, because you could just attack at any time. But by, like, it's kind of like, by not doing any dashes after the laser, you don't commit at all to any sort of movement, which isn't that bad but it's also not that good because by doing the small commitments of dashing in or dashing back you're you can um imply different things to him and then get him to do bad things so like if you laser in place and then you stand there then he, yeah he might get scared of your down air but he'll be a lot more scared of you laser down airing or laser nairing if you laser and then you dash in, dash back. 
So there's like a bunch of situations, this stock where it comes up. And it's like you don't have to dash dance after every laser, but it's really good to like do a lot more. So you're right here. So you landed this laser and he's kind of at the range where you can't, you can't really aerial him out of the laser. But if he retreats, you can get the chasing laser or something like that. Okay, so here, okay, so you go for the chasing laser. That was good. And then you turn around. I'm, a, I'm not really sure. I'm guessing you think he's going to, like, run in after this or something? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, so I turned my back in case I think he full hop or goes to the side platform. And then when I saw that he didn't, I just short hop and then turn around laser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was good. That was, like, okay. And then you did this again, which is, this is okay, I guess. Okay, but the the thing is, is like so far you haven't dash danced out of a single out of a single one of these. You just keep sort of doing like this laser up tilt thing, and so like you haven't really given him any threats unless he tries to be aggressive. And I think that like out of these situations, like if you land like a laser. If you if you're like landing this laser on him, he you either need to be approaching him or pretending that you're going to approach him. Because it's like he's not going to run in to attack this if he thinks you're going to down air him. But he might but in this situation it's so common for the Falco to laser into a down air here that like just the chances of you landing this laser and then him immediately running in to like up smash or something are incredibly low. Because yeah. because from his perspective, he just got lasered by an approaching Falco. You're now right in this range. He's either going to full hop away, he's going to he's going to shield or he's going to dash away basically. And it's like see, you had it's like you had all these actionable frames that you don't make use of after the laser. So it's like you get this. So it's like you laser him, and it's like you have time to set up any kind of pressure you want. And it's like the thing with pressure is like, yeah, you're not guaranteed to get a hit out of the pressure. But the point of doing the pressure is that you get an even more advantageous position. So it's like... By landing these lasers, you're getting an advantage, and then by going in for the pressure after the lasers, you're further increasing that advantage. But what you're kind of doing here by doing this up tilt is you're getting the laser advantage, and then you're just sort of going for like a hard read that doesn't really get you anything if you're wrong. So rather than, rather than getting either an instant hit out of this situation or like shield pressure, you end up in this situation where he doesn't have any threat, and now he's actually in an advantage position right here. So you took a position where you had a really good advantage off the laser, and because you did this up tilt, now you, he's in a good position. And now you're in this annoying situation where he's, like, dashing at you and you're trying to dash away. Yeah, so I, I think in that specific spot, I was actually looking for him to do take laser full hop at me with like a full hop drill uh, because I thought he might think I'm going to laser down air. Uh, so like I was actually trying to preempt an up, a full hop from him when I did that. Not a running up smash specifically. Uh, it was, but I guess, I don't know. Because you're right that like after I did the up tilt, if he did keep dashing, then I was in a bad spot as a result kind of like i ended up being in a frame disadvantage so yeah i don't know like actually what i got that kind of position because that happens a lot where like i try to preempt the full hop and then just don't full hop and then i'm kind of in a weird position now well i i'm pretty certain that he doesn't have time to full hop in this situation because like yeah you, ha I, you have a lot of laser advantage i think let's see what was it laser has like 11 so let's see you see you land you have one two three four so you're actionable right here so you're like plus 11 right here basically and so if he tries to full hop out of this your aerial would hit him at least i'm pretty certain and the thing is is like if he doesn't okay so let's see it's like i see. think the other sorry yeah yeah, yeah, yeah no go for it 
the other thing though is that I didn't know if he took if he was going to take the laser or shield the laser as I was shooting it. So mm-hmm. I didn't know how much frame advantage I would have when I shot him. Like if he shielded it, he might have had a little more time to full hop. That's why I, I kind of thought maybe the up tilt might be a good idea. But yeah, I, again, I, I'm not really sure. Well, if you think that he is not going to, like, if you think that he's going to shield it or something like that. You still want to like you still want to try to continue getting more of an advantage. So you could, you know, laser again. Like basically your options here are either you're gonna do an aerial or you're gonna laser again. Like because otherwise you're not taking advantage of the position you're putting him in. Like that's like the, that's kind of like the whole point is like yeah even if you have like a read that he's gonna do something else like it's kind of like you know you have a read that he's going to be in the corner so you dive into the corner and then he just has you in the corner now because he didn't do that thing it's like you want your good positions to potentially become better positions rather than like taking this position and then like if he f- if he full hopped, this wouldn't hit anyway. Like, because you do it immediately after the laser. The only thing this beats, literally, is dash in immediately after laser. Yeah, I, I do think I did the up tilt too quickly, for sure. But I but it was my intention, I think, to hit a full hop. But you're right that I think I did it too quickly. Because, like, in it's just... It's basically, like, you have the chance to create the, the mix-up here because you have the, the frame advantage. And so it's, like, by giving up that... Like, um, I call it activity, but it's basically, like, whoever gets to choose the situation and the other person is responding to it is always at a bit of an advantage because you're the one who gets to choose which situation you're in. And so by lasering him there and then doing an up tilt, even if you think he's going to like full hop up or something like you, you need to do something here that creates more pressure on him than like, Hey, if you immediately come in on me, cause it's like, okay. So it's like, you need to create pre- pressure so that like in this situation, you're just hard reading it and you're not getting anything unless he does exactly what you want him to do at the exact timing that you want him to do. Because it's like, if he does full hop and then he doesn't fast fall out of it, even if you do this, this up tilt, like he's not, he doesn't need to fall for this. He could just full hop over you, you up tilt and then he double jumps away or he drifts past you. Like there's, there's not you're not creating favorable situations you're creating a situation where if he does exactly what i want this works and if he doesn't it does nothing and that's not the type of situation you want to be creating so like in that spot then uh if i shot like another like semi approaching laser do you think that would be a better overall option than going for the up tilt yeah because at least that is a situation where you are trying to actively put yourself in a better position. Because if you if you land the semi-approaching laser from that range, and let's say he shields, then you can just laser shield laser shine his shield. And if he dashes back out of it, out of the first laser, then the semi-approaching laser will catch him. And if he shields the first one and then full hops. A lot of times after the second laser, you'll be able to shield the full hop aerial and then roll. So, uh, can, he, can he not also take laser, like, dash, jump, shine at me? He can, but that puts him at such a huge... Like, it puts him at such a huge risk because... You know, like, you have to look at it from the Fox's perspective, too, of, like, he doesn't just have equal access to all his options because... There's so many times where if you land a laser in that situation, you're going to hit him. You know, like, you're just going to jump in and hit him out of that situation. So it's like, here, like, let's look at it from the fox's perspective. From the fox's perspective, okay, he gets hit. He gets hit right here. 
This would be really scary because I'm pretty sure you can just JC shine him out of this, but you don't go for it. You go for the, the turnaround here. Like, it's it's basically like you, you get this advantage position and then you're like, please run into my up tilt, you know? And it's like, there's, it's like, it's, oh, it's okay. It's like, um, you know, you, you get your, you know, you're, you're boxing with somebody and you get them into the corner while you're boxing them. And then you try to wait for them to hit you to counter punch them. That's kind of like what's going on here. And it's like, if you're if you're pressuring somebody and you put them in a bad position, you want to try to take advantage of that position. And it's like, yes, there are ways in which they can hard read you. Like, they, there is some form of option they can do to hard read you that will get them out of your situation, just like is true in any situation. But if you don't go for it, you're giving up the pressure that you have in the corner by letting them be the one that dictates what's happening. Does that make sense? Yeah, I th I think so. I think like like it's probably like the up till is just like something that I shouldn't go for like nearly as often as I do. Like I I'm probably it's like very much like an option that I I think I over rely on when I could just be playing a lot more like advantageous mix ups over and over. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so like let's look at the fox's perspective. So he lands, he lands with this full hop drill. Okay, so he gets lasered there. He doesn't like that. He does this full hop drill. You laser him at a really good timing where he's just, you know, like he's just far enough above the ground that he doesn't get the land from the laser. This feels awful as fox because you can't dash out of it. Your only option is really to double jump and you can potentially trap yourself. And so that feels kind of gross. So he lands here. He's actionable right here, but he doesn't actually have anything that can beat this second laser. I think this second laser is like really, really, really well spaced. Like I need to actually do this a lot more as Falco is to space it like that. So he gets hit right here. Like if you're the fox in this situation, you're not thinking like, yeah, I'm gonna JC shine. I'm gonna jump in and shine like right here. Like what you're thinking right here is okay. Falco is gonna do some form of aggressive mix-up like how do i get away from him and so he does this dash back but he wouldn't have been safe if you did any kind of aggressive mix-up here and it's like this also doesn't do anything to deal with the dash away okay he's being a moron was this an intentional back air here Uh, yeah, though I was trying to shine reverse back here. I'm off the stage. Okay, I think it's usually best to go for the dare here. Like, just, like, shine, like, so, wait, so, it was like an accidental cross-up shine here then? Like, you didn't mean to cross this up? Because it, it hits him backwards. I It looks like it hits him backwards anyway. It, it yeah, might, yeah, it, it, it might, was supposed to be reverse, yeah. Okay, yeah. Like, I think the best thing to do here is do the shine with him, like, on your right side, and then just shine dare, because if he DIs in, he gets hit by the dare, and he literally just dies, and then if he DIs out, he has enough stun that you can do, like, a laser edge guard. So, there's almost never a reason, if you're gonna do that shine here, to not do the shine dare. Okay, good back here. <laughs> Yeah, this is just, a, you just want to be really careful in situations like this, where you have an advantage, like, you just have to be really careful that, like, by trying to combo him or hit him more, you don't end up in a situation where you're like this. Like, it's better to do something that will never end you up in a situation like this, pretty much ever, because... Look at, like, what it, what it was at. It's, like, if you're at... Okay, so you, so right here, you basically read that he's going to miss tech. Or you think that you're going to get here before him. But it's, like, even if that was the case, you shouldn't be, like, drifting back here into the corner. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because it's creating a situation where, like, if you had... Like, let's say you down aired him, and then you literally just stood here you would be in a way better position than you are going for this because now you're cornered. Yeah, one, I agree 100%. I, 
I do that. This is another one of the situations where I like put myself in the corner unintentionally. Mm hmm. Okay, I like that forward smash. Okay, good roll. Oh, that was that was an interesting down air. I didn't expect that. I thought you'd forward smash right here, but uh, the down air was was good. Um, okay, so when, this is like okay doing invincibility against Fox, I think doing like the light shield on the platform and full hop is a lot, like full hop from the platform is a lot better. Like basically like going and like doing like a light shield here or full hopping from the platform because in this situation, even though this is like not too, too bad, there's like, there is a world where like you go into the corner and then he like comes up up to the platform or drops through the platform here and then like murders you so just something to, to watch out for like full hopping in the corner when he's invincible because you have the chance to position yourself anywhere you want on the stage before he comes back and so you really if you have a chance to do a mix-up you don't really want to do it out of the corner because it's like if you did the same full hop but you didn't do it in the corner, like, let's say you did it, like, here, or from the platform here. It's like, like, let's say you're here, and you, like, kind of wait on the platform, and then he, you see that he, he drops through the platform, and then you just full hop from here, and you're kind of in center. He doesn't actually have a lot of options. But you actually, like, put yourself super in the corner to full hop out, and this is, like, basically the worst spot you can be full hopping in, because he, he has a chance to somehow shine you here and kill you so it's just sort of like that positioning awareness thing again and i think yeah. that's sort of like the biggest thing that i've seen so far that and dash dancing i see almost almost no dash dancing at all yeah like look at this it's crazy like in this whole situation you haven't done a single dash like dash dance at all It's just not. It's just not like a thing. Yeah, I. I don't really like. I don't. Well, I try one. not to do it unless I have like a reason for it. So, and I don't really have like an like a concrete reason in my head for why I would do it in certain spots yet. Mm -hmm. So, that's kind of why I just. Because like in my head, it's just like if I could just laser and then half approaching laser, it, it accomplishes exactly what I want. So, yeah, I haven't like come up with like a good purpose for the uh, dash dance specifically in certain spots yet okay um so the thing that dr pp always says about this or ppmd the thing he always says about this about falco's dash dance is you want to think very carefully about how every movement you do affects your opponent and so the dash dance doesn't necessarily gain you options like, it doesn't, like, put you at a, you know, better distance necessarily, and it doesn't necessarily, um, like, it doesn't gain you anything tangible in the game, and I think that's sort of, like, what you're talking about, is that, like, you're in a range where you can still do the laser, and so you might as well just do the laser there, or you might as well just position yourself differently, but it's the the dash dance you know it's it's not for you you know <laughs> the dash dance isn't for you to position yourself the dash dance is for your opponent to see and then have to react to given the idea that you might be doing something like let's say you like let's say you 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 laser in place and your opponent dashes back and creates a decent amount of space and then in your head you're thinking like laser approach or like approaching laser, which would which is oftentimes a good situation there, but let's say that Fox tries to short hop nair in your approaching laser and hits you, or or dashing in up smash, by doing the dash in, like doing like a one two three like dash in dash back dash in, you create two times where to him it looked like you were going to approaching laser rather than one if that does that make sense yeah for sure i i think that like i 
I have thought about like the implications of moving forward after lasers in terms of like what my opponents think I'm going to do. Like it's like a really easy one is like sometimes I like laser half approaching laser and then when I'm like in the range of like a potential like chic take laser F tilt, I do just dash back and then dash in and they like whiff the F tilt because they thought I was going to approach because they expected me to approach again since right. I Right. Already... Yeah, so like I So Okay, that's yeah. a little bit different because what you're use what you're doing there is you're using your positioning as a threat, and then you're using dash. So there's a big difference between dash back, dash in, and dash in, dash back, dash in, and the difference is what your opponent sees. So. Um, oh, okay. I see what you're saying now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There we, okay, good. So, because there's a lot of situations where your opponent will actually react to your dash in. And so, it's, yeah, so a good example is Sheik's F tilt, but rather than, like, being in the range where you can hit them and then dash back, dash in attack, there are situations where you're maybe in a range where, you know, you're a little bit further away, and then you you laser, and then you dash in, and they see you dashing in, and then you dash back, dash in, and then because they react to the initial dash in, they'll whiff. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's so it's like very important to like think about how your dash ins affect the opponent, and so that is why in these situations, when you have potential um ad advantages you want to push those advantages by faking them out like it's like if you have space to do things your options are immediately do things or make him think you're going to do things those are basically your two options and so you use you use the make him think i'm gonna do or sorry you use the one where you you do things sometimes although i haven't seen it pretty much at all in this in these matches most of the time, you you get in a good position, and then you sort of read... It's kind of like the thing you said about the sheet, where you put yourself in a good position, and then you will sometimes avoid their uh, like attempt to keep you out of that good position. But what you want to do is you want to put yourself in a good position, then either immediately take it, which I'm sure you've done tons of times, so I'm not, I'm not going to say you don't do that, but I haven't seen it, but you put yourself in a good position and then immediately take that position to, to put on pressure, or you have to make it look like you're about to put on pressure more. Um, this is a situation, and then, so this is another weird positioning situation. So, Fox is sort of top platform camping you, and I know that it's irritating that he's on the top platform, but remember that you're winning. He actually is the one that has to approach you. And so, like, approaching is really good in melee. Just in general, approaching is good. But what's really bad is chasing. You almost never want to chase your opponent. Because when, when you're chasing someone, they're almost always leading you into a trap. And so... Yeah. Hmm? Sorry, I was just going to say, because... So, I actually didn't really have a concrete way to, like, deal with him on the top platform. So, like, I thought the lasers I was doing, the full hop lasers, were, like, a, a safe way to kind of threaten him. Because, like, they wear down his shield, and then eventually, like, he'll get shield poked by lasers. And maybe even, like, a full hop aerial later that I do will then also shield poke. Mm -hmm. but I couldn't think of, like, anything else, really, that's, like, effective and also kind of safe. Right. Well, okay, so the thing is, is... So, first of all, if you're in this situation and you're winning... You literally don't have to do anything. Like, you're winning. It's, it's up to him to attack you. And so, the best thing in a situation a lot of time is to literally you just don't have to do anything. Like, like you're in a good position, or you're not in a bad position, and you're, you're winning. So, it's up to him to approach. And, like, so basically, swap these situations around, and you're the fox... And you're, you're behind Falco, and Falco's just sitting here. You have to figure out a way in on Falco. You're not on the top platform losing, being like, okay, I think Falco is... Like, I, you're not on the top platform losing, being like, sick, I'm just going to camp here for five more minutes. Like, that's not what the Fox is thinking. 
Right. Like, he's behind. He has to approach you here. But, he, okay, so let's let's just ignore the fact that you're ahead for a second. Just remember, when you're ahead, you never have to approach them. They have to approach. <laughs> okay, yeah, good point, good point. And so let's pretend you're not losing. Let's say, or sorry, let's, let's pretend you're not winning. Let's say you, you are losing. And so you're frustrated because he got, let's say, you know, the positions are swapped. Where he's, where he, or maybe not swap, but regardless, let's say um, he's at two stocks, 28%, and you're at two stocks, 103%, okay? Let's say you're losing like that. So, this, these lasers, um, I don't know enough about these lasers to say whether they are good or bad. Um, I think they're fine. Because I think you have the ability where if he sort of does anything from this position, I think you're in a pretty decent spot. Because, like, you know, if he drops off down to the ground, you can just land on the platform and stuff like that. I don't think these are bad. They don't necessarily force him off the platform, you know. But they're not that they're not that bad. Because, like you said, you're making his shield smaller. They're... So then you drift it to the platform here. I like this. But... From the platform here as Falco, you don't really have a way to pressure Fox still. And I think you kind of realize that. And so... Okay, you're sort of in the same situation again where you're sort of baiting him. I think this is okay. I think this is fine. This was not. <laughs> Doing this is like... That was... Like, you're, you're kind of... You kind of just gave up. Like, you're like, okay. So, it's like... It's like... So, basically... He decides to sit on the top platform, and you say, okay, I'm going to laser you so that you eventually have to come down. And if that was working, why would you stop doing it, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't provide you with any stimulation to say that, like, the things you were doing were not working. Yeah, I think, um, I don't think I was, like... I think I my whole goal was to try to find a way to get onto the top platform with him safely. Like, I think this is actually literally, like, intentional. Like, even though it is bad, I think, now that you're pointing it out, but I do think I literally wanted to land on the platform with him. I I think... I mean, I I just, it definitely looks like you wanted to, yeah. But it's not... Yeah. yeah. I just... I, I'm not sure, like... Like, I guess the idea is that maybe I should just not ever try to get up there. I should just only be, like, trying to pressure him from, like, other angles or something, or with, like, lasers. Well, yeah, you can also you can also get some full hop aerials, and another thing you can do is maybe not the perfect thing, but you can kind of, you can full hop from right here and kind of be up in this range and then kind of, like, lightly threaten him, like, full hop and then kind of, like, fade back and stuff like that. And oh, you can, yeah. and you can also full hop from because the thing is is once he's jumped he's committed a lot more and so once he's jumped you can actually come from beneath him and do more things but basically okay so he's losing and he's in this situation he's scared like he's very clearly scared right he doesn't want to come down he's like oh no i'm losing so like let's look at it from his perspective okay so he's up here and he's like, okay, I'm kind of camping up, kind of camping the Falco, he's hoping that he does something dumb so I can get a kill. He's probably looking for you to jump up, like full hop up so he can short hop back at you and then he'll be like, hey, I'm good at the game, which he's not. So, <laughs> so, he, so he's looking for you to do that. He's, he's clearly scared here. He's being, he's being kind of dumb because the thing about this situation is that if you don't make an error, he's never going to get in a better position from just standing up here. Ever. So he's basically putting himself in a position where if he just keeps repeating this forever, you basically have five minutes to poke lasers on him and like pretend you're going to come up to fight him, but not really come up to fight him. And so he's basically putting himself in a situation where his only options are stalemate or lose. And he's already losing the game, so it's just a strictly winning situation for you. And it's strictly bad for him. So, what I would say is that, he, so, the goal here is to kind of get him to jump, 
or to get him to shield enough that obviously his shield is small and you can shield poke, which is something you thought about. So you go. So here's this situation. I think this is actually not bad from you. I it's not maybe amazing because he could have just dropped back energy right here, but it's okay. And so you do this, and he thinks you're gonna double jump dare him. So this is good in the sense that you created a threat, and because you created this threat, he jumps. Now you're in a situation where you can pressure him because he's already committed to this jump. And so from this situation, you have a lot more options to be able to go to side platform here and then threaten a full hop or catch him with a full hop double jump on the way down or catch him with a full hop aerial on the way down, stuff like that. And so, okay, so he does this, you're getting him to jump a lot more. Like in this situation, this is like an easy full hop back here from you. Like right there. Because because he's getting antsy and jumping a bunch. But, so, now he gets this. Where you have to wave land on. So it's like, by just standing here and doing absolutely nothing, literally nothing, he gets himself into this situation. And it's like, this is this is great. He did nothing, and he's get he has a frame advantage against you on the top platform. Like this is basically what he wanted. And I understand getting a little bit aggressive, like trying to go for stuff like this. But I'm just letting you. I'm just kind of showing you that like you don't need to do this. You know, like you don't need to end up in the situation where you're fighting him. He is. Being, he got exactly what he wanted out of that. Now he's gonna go into his next game, and he'll be like, hey, I just camp the top platform, like like forever until i get an opening there and i don't want to encourage him to do that so <laughs> what one thing i tell people is people are afraid that other people will do losing strategies forever and it's not true so there are some extremely stubborn players that will do losing strategies forever but only because people don't force it to lose forever so it's basically like yeah, you get this feeling where, like, man, this person is camping me, and, like, I'm doing very little to actually harm them, and what if they just do this for, like, the next five minutes? But the thing is, is if you're consistently harming people little by little, and threatening them, and then possibly, you know, getting a back air here, or an up air here, here and there, you're creating, like, a situation for them where they try to camp you and then they can feel themselves slowly losing they usually will then abandon that strategy but if you play into it and like let this guy get what he wants then now he thinks that that's just what he should do like he thinks he's good for that and that's not what you want like if you can if you create no matter how boring it is if you create a situation where you build up a little bit of damage and he can't get anything eventually people will stop doing it and they won't just keep doing it like he's not just going to do that forever but only if you make it a losing situation for him but because it just worked he's like hey i'm still behind but because falco keeps giving me stuff for standing up here like a dummy but he's being like standing up here like a dummy, and then Falco gives me stuff like you give him another opening just for standing up here. Of course he's gonna keep doing it. Of course he thinks he's smart for doing that because it's working. So now you hit him out of this. I actually can almost guarantee he will not go up to the top platform and camp just because you hit him out of it once. Like, yeah, watch I, him watch him come back on this stock and not top platform camp you. <laughs> yeah, no, he literally doesn't, yeah. Oh, so he goes up, he goes, he actually does go up there for a second, but, so, this is probably, honestly, this is definitely probably because of that first stock where he did get the advantage out of it. Because it's just, he's just scared, and he's basically like, oh, I'm gonna lose the game unless I do this, and you just can't let it work for him ever. Like, if you never let something work for people, eventually they stop. Like, that's the thing is people get frustrated. For for instance, people will execution test their ledge dashes. I get frustrated with this too. Where it's like, dude, this guy doesn't believe in ledge dashes. Like, every single time you ledge dash, the person is sitting there throwing out their best move. And it's like, 
like the the best solution to that is you just ledge dash and hit them and eventually people are like man every single time i get hit by the ledge dash and they stop doing it even if it's even if it's like annoying you know they will stop yeah that makes a lot of sense actually so it's like the what you have to think whenever somebody does something really stupid like that where they just sit on the top platform or something is no matter what, I just can't let that succeed. Like, if you just stand over here and you force him to come down and he hits you with something, that's still better than letting him get away with doing that. So it's like, just passively gain an advantage however you can, and it'll build up eventually, and then eventually he'll be like, man, every time I go to the top platform, Falco just slowly works away at me and it never gives me anything, so I can't do that. And he'll adjust his game plan. So, I don't know right. if you have any other videos. Um, if Just by going purely on this, I think a big a big thing is... Okay, so there's a couple, a couple takeaways from this game. So, the first one is, when you get an advantaged position, such as out of laser, you need to make sure to push that advantaged position, rather than expecting your opponent to always push back against it because people don't always push back against pressure they a lot of times will try to escape pressure and so it's like you should either be hitting people with the pressure or using the threat of the pressure to hit their defensive options rather than thinking okay when i pressure them they're going to get aggro because a lot of time that a lot of times that just doesn't happen because you have your actual aggro mix-ups. Like, basically, it's like if you are a pro, if you are hitting Fox, if you're pressuring Fox, and then every time out of the pressure he attacks you, you'd be better off pressuring and then just shooting more lasers to get him to like whiff his like. Every time you, every time he tries to attack you out of your advantage, and you laser him again, he's getting this message of like, "Oh, that didn't work." And then also after each failed, so like you, you pressure him, he tries to attack you out of pressure, and you stop him with another laser. You now have another chance at pressuring him, and if. Let's say you laser him, he presses in. You laser him again, he presses in again. You laser him, he presses in again. I say, oh, I wonder what he's going to do the fourth time, you know? <laughs> then the fourth time, you laser, and then you just dare in place, and he gets hit by it. So it's like, y you can, you need to use the advantage to either maintain the advantage or increase the advantage. What you don't want to do is create an advantage and then fall it back and lessen up on your advantage like you don't or loosen up you don't want to create an advantage and then go backwards to neutral if that makes sense so that's that's a big point and just sort of like a thing in general of like to try to either press the advantage or keep it rather than letting it go then the other one in a sort of similar vein is corner positioning where it's like you need to be very careful that like if you get cornered it's because he beat you somehow like he beat you in the dash dance he beat you by full hopping and you had to roll to the corner there are situations where he can trick you in neutral or force you through good movement to end up in the corner but you don't want to get into the corner when he didn't do any of those things like basically you need to force him to force you into the corner and if you just give him the corner by positioning yourself there, it like doesn't like you basic you're basically doing his job for him. So those are the two biggest things. And then um, the thing with the top platform is more of like a minor case, but it is still relevant. Where that's another position where it's like if you're not in a bad position, don't let your opponent bait you into going into a bad position it's kind of like if um sheik is sitting on ledge shino stalling and they're at high percent last stock no let's say they're at high percent two stocks they're at like 120 with two stocks and you're at 10 percent with two stocks and they're on the ledge 
and they're Shino stalling over and over and over and over. Like, the answer to that is to not is not to laser for 60 seconds and then jump in dare. Like, the answer to that is to just keep lasering. And if you're behind in that situation and they're doing that, then you do have to work your way in. But you're also, you also don't need to work your way in instantly because, first of all, you can bait him into coming up from ledge by getting impatient. Like, if there's five minutes left on the clock and the Sheik is Shino stalling you and you're behind, you can kind of call his bluff and be like, okay, Shino stall for the next five minutes. And if he doesn't, you won. You got him out of the Shino stall and then you can fight him. And if he does actually try to do that, let him do it for like a couple minutes or like a minute and then kind of play around the range where he can't hit you at all, but you can't really punish him. And then like, basically you let him get complacent and then you punish it. But like, there are these situations where like you, if you're ahead, you don't have to force it. And if you're behind, you have a long time to force it. And it's like, you don't want to like the most important thing in this game is to not do what your opponent wants you to do. So if your opponent is sitting on the top platform and they're like, come on, approach me. The last thing you want to do is do exactly what they want you to do. Do anything but that. It's okay to pressure. It's okay to to laser and stuff like that. But don't do what they're asking you to do. Never do what your opponent's like, hey, can you do this for me? It's like, no, this is a competitive game. I'm not going to do what you're asking me to do. Right, right. Yeah, the up tilt there is a, is a big thing too of like, keep you 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 don't want uh like you basically your goal should be to minimize risk to yourself especially as falco like doing these up tilt mix-ups is like yeah they're high re oh what so these these the up tilt mix-ups like here are like high risk high reward i think he goes up here and then he drops right here into this up tilt this is just basically you gambling everything on this up tilt when you don't need to. These are the type of up tilts you do when you have nothing else to do because it's high risk, high reward. You know what you want? You want low risk, high reward. You only should move into high risk, high reward territory when you've exhausted your low risk, high reward options. And then, yeah, so this is a really big one. Don't corner yourself. Like, you're doing his job for him. It's just like, <laughs> it's funny because he's like, come on, come to the top platform. And you're like, okay. And then he just stands there and you're like, look, man, I cornered myself for you, you know? <laughs> and it's like, you don't want to be such a nice guy. You kind of want to make this guy's life as hard as possible. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so it's like, you're being a little too nice to him. I like that backer a lot. Okay, yeah, that was. I really like that pressure, and I like that back air mix up you did. So yeah, but th that's kind of like the thing that sort of comes up is just sort of like you you have to make your opponent's life as difficult as possible, and so I think. Okay, so in terms of what to practice specifically, I think your movement and especially your aggressive movement on your combos improved a lot. Because last time when I watched you, there was it was almost incoherent the way you would kind of move after you hit your, your, your combo hits. And I think that it's improved a lot since then. So really good job on that. And it's no longer what'd you say what'd you say? Sorry. No, I was just saying uh... Hello? I was, no, I was just saying uh, glad to hear it, thanks. Yeah, cool. Because it's like Last time I watched your Falco, it was like a pretty glaring weakness. And I think that this time it's very much not a glaring weakness. And I think so that's really good. And that sort of opens up other things. Because I always tell people basically the way to get better at the game is to find your biggest weakness and make it not your biggest weakness. Like work on it until a new thing is your biggest weakness. And then you switch to that. So... Currently, I think your your combo hits and your follow-ups off of combos 
are no longer the weakest part of your game. That's really good. So we can kind of move past that. And I think the, the next sort of step for your Falco is to avoid putting yourself in bad positions. And even more so than that, like avoid putting yourself in worse positions than you are currently in. So if you're in a neutral position, you don't want to put yourself so these are in unforced situation because if he's forcing you and he pressures you into the corner, don't be like, oh, I let him get me into the corner. Like that's going to happen, you know, but like basically you don't want to be comboing the guy and your combo ends and you're in the corner and he has center. That's really not what you want. So I think it's like if you're in a neutral situation, you want to try really hard not to accidentally put yourself in a in a bad situation and if you're in a good situation, such as the laser stun, or you have good pressure or good spacing, you don't want to put yourself back to neutral because you already like you already gained ground. You know, it's like a tug of war where you gain some space and then you go, oh, I gained some space, and then you take a break and you kind of let them pull you back the other way, and then you pull it back again. And it's like no, when you get the advantage, you really want to like keep it and then keep pushing it like keep the advantage on your side and keep increasing it and any distance that you increase your advantage and then give it up it's basically as if you did nothing from the start so i think being very careful to position yourself in ways that continue to increase or maintain your advantage that is going to be a really big point and i think you should focus really hard on that the other one is practice dash forward mix-ups practice dash dancing out of laser like a lot more and paying attention to how your dashes affect your opponent so like lasering someone and then doing dash in dash back and just seeing what they do you know like playing friendlies with someone you laser them you dash in dash back say yeah oh, what do they do out of that and then it's like do i have an option so it's like if you laser someone and you dash in, dash back, and they full hop, then you say, okay, could I laser and then just dash in Nair immediately and catch them out of their rising part of their full hop? And then try that out. And if, if you laser and you dash in, dash back, and someone shields, then you go, oh, okay, I could laser and then dash in, dash back, dash in Nair, or I could laser and then laser again because they think, or like dash in laser because they think I'm going to attack them out of my first laser. And so sort of just pay a lot of attention to how your dash dances affect your opponent and just throw in the dash dances a lot more, but be very conscious over whether you start your dash dance with a dash in or a dash back because it really changes how the opponent will react because like let's say you're in a situation where you know you laser someone like that like basically that situation where you go for laser up tilt you can be going for laser dash back and then they think aha he's giving me space but then what you can do is you can dash and dare so you can do laser dash back dash and dare mango does stuff like that constantly where he lasers, dash back, they go, aha, he's giving up space, and then dash and dare, and they you catch them dashing in. So, right. Yeah, I think those are the main takeaways of... I kind of just reviewed them, but I'll go over really fast again. Maintaining good position, increasing advantage, um, dash dancing after lasers, not giving your opponent what they want. Yeah, very, uh, really good points, actually. I, I didn't think uh, about at all about the dash in versus the dash back uh, when it came to dash dancing. So I'll definitely keep that in mind. And yeah, just pay a lot of attention to how those affect your opponent specifically. But um, other than that, I think you definitely improved a lot from the last lesson and you covered up the weakness that we talked about. So I'm pretty confident that you'll be able to fix these parts of your gameplay and then hopefully, you know, the next time we do a lesson, then we'll be able to find, you know, a new worst part about your Falco that we can target and then you can adjust that. But good improvements so far, so just keep it up and focus on these points and it should be on a pretty good trajectory. 
for sure. Thanks so much again for the help. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a, it was a fun lesson. So um, have a good one, man. Yeah, you too.